tyrant and war criminal. Henry Kissinger died at 100. I don't think that it's uh, uh, crass or, or inappropriate to point out the legacy of someone who's responsible for millions upon millions of deaths, and that is exactly what and who Henry Kissinger was. When Rush Limbaugh died, I did the same thing, pointing out what should be remembered as his legacy. And joining me today to talk about that very thing, the legacy of Henry Kissinger, is Cliff Schechter, who's been a long time, brother. Where you been? I, I don't know. Here, there, everywhere. You off in New York, gallivanting around, showing the town. Sir, uh, I never I gallivant. Missed... No gallivanting. Okay, I have maybe never gallivanting? gallivanted. Like a, maybe a, just a bit of a sort of a, a slight kind of limp? Sachet. I, I sachet. <laughs> I, sachet. I could see you sacheting. yes. Um, it has been a while. I'm glad to be back on. And um, I'm glad you started this off the way you did because, you know, I don't try to dance on people's graves. I don't get up and try to go, woo Sure. But I cannot stand this sort of hagiography. Uh, I'm saying the word wrong. Hagiography? Whatever. The ass kissing. Can I say that? Yeah, yeah you um, can say that. That that happens when, when terrible people die and we want to start pretending that they were good people. And I've already seen it with a few, even people on the left who, you know, worked with him and knew him. And I don't care. Like, maybe he had a warm handshake. I don't think that if you were a victim of Pol Pot, you cared much what his yeah. handshake was like. So I'm not interested in that. He He was an absolutely awful human being. And the only thing that just boggles the mind is how he was able to successfully get a bipartisan because democrats are complicit in this absolutely too, group of people to just treat him like this elder statesman this you know this elite that should be at all of their parties when this guy should have been at the hague so I'm sitting next to milosevic and, right. and rwandan generals and the rest yeah i'm i'm um a little distressed I, I would say this to the audience if you're out there today and you're on twitter or you're wherever you are online and you're seeing high profile liberals and Democrats and people you respect, it's just as easy to keep your mouth shut on a day like today than it yeah. is to heap praise upon a man who's responsible for literal millions of deaths. I wanna read very briefly for the audience's sake, for those who, who might be a little younger or haven't paid attention to who Henry Kissinger is, this article that is perfectly titled in the Rolling Stone today, by Spencer Ackerman, and here's the title. Henry Kissinger, war criminal beloved by America's ruling class, finally dies. <laughs> the infamy of Nixon's foreign policy architect sits eternally beside that of history's worst mass murderers. A deeper shame attaches to the country that celebrates him. And that's really what I wanna talk about today is the yeah. fact that this man, as you've mentioned, is beloved, is considered a man with a warm handshake, but there are millions of families across the planet who probably wouldn't uh, take that tack. So let me let me read a couple paragraphs from this. Sure. The Yale University historian, Greg Grandin, author of the biography Kissinger's Shadow, estimates that Kissinger's actions from 1969 through 76, a period of eight brief years when Kissinger was made Richard Nixon's and then Gerald Ford's foreign policy and national security, uh, excuse me, and then Gerald Ford's foreign policy as national security advisor and secretary of state, meant the end of between three and four million people. That includes, quote unquote, crimes of commission, he explained, as in Cambodia and Chile, and omission like green lighting Indonesia's bloodshed in East Timor, Pakistan's bloodshed in Bangladesh, and the inauguration of an American tradition of using and then abandoning the Kurds. And then this really gets to, just cuts right to the quick here. Every single person who died in Vietnam between August 1968 and the fall of Saigon, and all who died in Laos and Cambodia, where Nixon and Kissinger secretly expanded the war within months of taking office, as well as all who died in the aftermath, like the Cambodian genocide, their destabilization set into motion, died because of Henry Kissinger. 
We will never know what might have been the question Kissinger's apologists and those in the U.S. foreign policy elite who imagined themselves standing in Kissinger's shoes insist upon when explaining away his crimes. We can only know what actually happened. What actually happened was that Kissinger materially sabotaged the only chance for an end to the war in 1968 as a hedged bet to ensure he would achieve power in Nixon's administration or Humphreys. A true tally of the death, I'll include that, uh, will probably never be known of everyone who died so Kissinger could be National Security Advisor. So it sickens me when I see high profile Democrats on the record as praising the elder, uh, now rotting statesman for the good that he did. How about you? Who I think on some level has been rotting for about 50 years now. Um, you know, again, I don't know that you can put it much better than that. Stalin and Hitler get, get all the fanfare and deservedly so. Sure. Terrible, terrible people. But if you don't know what Pol Pot did and you want a quick refresher course, even if you don't have the time to read a book, just watch The Killing Fields. Absolutely. Um, if you want a quick refresher course, there's a number of movies. I can't think of a specific one right now, but about what we did in installing Pinochet in Chile, one of the larger mass murderers uh, in world history. It also led to destabilizing Argentina and the junta taking over there that led to the dirty war, people being thrown out of airplanes who were, you know, over the ocean who were, I mean, the thing is, is foreign policy, you know, so many things, if you destabilize one country, the country next to it gets destabilized and you, you can end up leading you know, in a whole area into, into civil war, quagmire, murder. What he did in Vietnam, again, and illegally did in Cambodia, he did not, not that, I, I don't know why it wasn't illegal what he did in Vietnam, quite honestly, but, yeah. but it was illegal what he did in Cambodia. We had, did not have a war there. He chose because he thought, you know, and probably rightly so, the Viet Cong were hiding out there. It doesn't matter. We, we were not, didn't have a right to bomb there. And apparently from the, the quotes that were given, I'm trying to remember it was a general who said, it, it wasn't bomb the Viet Cong, it was anything you see moving or flying destroyed. Yeah. Civilians were mass murdered in Cambodia. It led to this, the, as you pointed out, this huge sort of vacuum into which Pol Pot and the Khmer Rouge, one of the most murderous regimes of all time, certainly of the last of the 20th and 21st century, stepped forward. And, and you know, as you said, the list could go on in eastern Pakistan, which is now Bangladesh, pushing forward uh, blood, you know, just a bloodbath there. He was awful. And I kind of feel like the bigger deal here is it led to some of the places we are today, because when you can forgive that kind of behavior and you can allow someone like that to remain in eminence grace, you know, to show up at all your parties with yeah, your yeah. nice little cocktails and your your little weenies in a bun and 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 all of that, you could do all of that and, and and break bread with this man who was a mass murderer. Well, then you know what's there to breaking bread with Mussolini or Idi Amin or some what what's the difference at some point?